Hi, and welcome to this clip on organic synthesis. Um, the hope is that this will generally be a review of some of the uh, common functional groups that you already know about and how we interchange between them. Um, in particular, what we want to try and get across is the idea of creating synthetic function, sorry, synthetic roots. A synthetic root is a, a multi-step reaction whereby several reactions in a certain order might be carried out to change one functional group into another. Some functional groups can't be changed into another functional group in one step, obviously. You may have to do several things in a certain order to make the reaction work, or to make the change you want work. So if we have a carbon skeleton, such as this, we can represent the carbon skeleton with um, the letter R, just for simplicity. The functional group is the alcohol group. So in this particular example, that's your functional group. I'm going to list some of the common functional groups that you'd come across in A-level. So let's now look at some of the functional groups that uh, we need to know for A-level. So the functional groups that are in blue are ones that uh, you may have um, heard about before or will have come across in, um, in your A A A1 year. And the ones in red are ones that you'll have come across or may come across in your A2 year. So depending on what, what sort of stage you're at at the moment when you're watching this video, the blue ones are A1, red ones are A2. So this is how the functional groups might appear in a structural formula, for example. And if we put the R groups in so you can see how the carbon skeleton fits around them. So the key thing to be able to do is to recognise these functional groups when you see them in structures. So now we're going to have a look at some of the ways in which you can plan synthetic roots around some of the functional groups that we're looking at here. So I'll stick to obviously what you cover in A-level chemistry and won't go beyond that. There's obviously many more functional groups that you come across at university, but the main ones that are on this screen, we'll have a look at how they might be interconverted in the next screen. So this gives you an idea of what we mean by uh, synthetic pathways. So for example, you might want to start with an aldehyde and end up with an ester, or you might want to start with a haloalkane and end up with a carboxylic acid. There's several ways you can do it. And yes, ultimately, at the end of the two years, you'd have to be familiar with this and be able to remember all of it. Not produce it as it's on the screen, but be able to draw from any part of it without too much difficulty um, and easily be able to plan and uh, write out a route, a synthetic route, with all of the uh, reactants and conditions that are listed here. Now the next one to look at, as well, not forgetting, is the alkenes. And these also have their own set of reactions that can be interlinked with that previous reactions map. So now let's have a look at some of the techniques that we use to try and interchange between some of these functional groups. When I say techniques, I don't mean the reactants. What I mean is the actual hardware, what equipment you set up and what practical techniques do you use? So the two main stages we look at are the actual making of your product and then its purification because you might have unreacted reactants that are there as well or you might have other products you want to separate it from. So you have, you have to purify it as well if you want a pure sample. So you may have come across these techniques already if you've been looking at oxidation of alcohols for example. Uh, one is designed to separate out the, uh, the reaction mixture from the product, so the distillate in the diagram would be your product. Or if you wanted to heat your reaction mixture as much as possible so that it turns completely or as much as it can into product and get a good yield, you might want to do refluxing instead. So it's worth now having a look at some of the glassware that's actually used for this because I mentioned at the beginning of the clip something called QuickFit. QuickFit is a brand that uh, produces glassware for uh, synthetic chemistry across the world and uh, their, their glassware in particular is very high quality, very well engineered, designed to fit together um, uh, using very, very uh, highly precision made joints. 
which I'm going to talk about in a second. So here's a picture of some of the glassware we commonly use. Um, you can see that the joints have a special kind of surface on them. And uh, if I draw a quick point and arrow, there you go. There's one of the joints. And you can grease the joints so you can create a good seal. So I'm just going to label up some of the pieces of glassware and then try and explain a little bit about each of them after this uh, particular screen. So I haven't included uh, a very important piece of glassware and that's the Leeward condenser. Uh, but the condenser is what you'd see in distillation apparatus, and you may well have come across this in your lessons already, and you may have had it, had it demonstrated to you by your teacher. Um, so what I'm going to have a look at at this point is uh, how we'd actually uh, start to purify some of the products. So these would be pieces of equipment that would be used for synthesis. Uh, the, the one, perhaps, that you'd use for purification would be a separating funnel, which I'm going to talk about in a second. So you can put your um, reaction mixture with the product in it into a separating funnel and then what you can do is shake it and seal it using the little stopper at the top and you can use the valve lower down to seal it both ends and occasionally what you'll have to do is to upend it so that the this bit is pointing upwards and you um, release the valve every now and then to degas it because obviously vapours will be given off from the organic layer. So if you shake it and then you let it settle and then you have an aqueous layer with the impurities and the organic compound you want in the solvent layer and the thing to do is to drain off the aqueous layer and that will take most of the impurities with it. There may be some water left in the organic layer that you think you have left behind so you can add a drying agent to remove that water and the drying agent will simply absorb the H2O. So an example of such an agent might be calcium chloride. So I'm going to take you through a typical purification um, sequence. Uh, this was uh, recorded by me uh, a couple of years ago. Um, in preparation for an A2 practical that I took, and uh, I'll take you through each of the each of the video clips uh, one by one. Each one's about a minute long, and I'll explain as best I can what's going on in each case, so you can hopefully start to see how carrying out a certain sequence of um, of techniques in order can uh, can lead to purification. So first, what we do is we dissolve in the minimum amount of hot ethanol. So the minimum amount means we get as much of the organic product as we can, but not swamping it with, with um, solvent, because we've got to try and get rid of the solvent later. There may be some impurities in there as well, but at least we know we've got as much of our solvent as possible. The reason we use hot ethanol, is because obviously things dissolve in hot solvents better than they dissolve in cold solvents. If you think about making a cup of tea, for example, you make it using hot water, so we use hot ethanol. So you could see that what I was doing was adding ethanol until as much of the solid as possible was dissolved, but not adding too much so I had lots and lots of ethanol to get rid of later. So the next one we're going to look at is how to filter off um, as much of that solution as possible. You can see that the end of the video clip has a yellowish solution, that's the, sol the solvent with the solid dissolved in it. 
I'm going to try and minimize my loss of, um, of product at this point. So I filter it whilst the ethanol is still hot, and that gets the maximum amount of dissolved organic product captured in solution. So you can see that uh, a special type of filter paper, well not a special type of filter paper, but fluted filter paper is used where it's actually halved, then quartered, and then folded into eighths. That creates a better surface area for filtration. It's a technique used in organic chemistry. So the final thing to do is to take the filtrate from that process and uh, put it through vacuum filtration. Um, now vacuum filtration is where a pump, either based on attachment to the tap to create a differential pressure, or an electric pump can cause a partial vacuum. And we use something called a Buckner um, funnel, which you can see in the third picture. So if you carry out the hot filtration properly, you'll get a good yield from that, and the, uh, the vacuum filtration, what you do is you allow the hot mixture to cool down. Often you can put it over ice to enhance this, this process. And as it cools down, what happens is the impurities come out of, um, sorry, the, the product comes out of a solution and crystallizes and the impurities stay dissolved in the ethanol. So what you're doing here is you're trying to get rid of some of the impurities that might still be dissolved in the ethanol in the second stage. So you, you cool it right down, the impurities come out, or uh, the impurities stay in the ethanol rather, and the, uh, the product, the pure product, comes out and gets uh, as crystals and you can filter this off. So eventually what you'll end up with, hopefully, is a pure solid product and the impurities will be um, in the uh, filtrate. Now the, the sort of uh, gushing sound you could hear, uh, you can obviously hear the motor in the background, the gushing sound was when the vacuum kicked in and uh, drew some of the solvent through. So uh, hopefully, by now, uh, you'll be able to see how not only we can do a variety of uh, multi-stage um, or, uh, functional group changes and organic um, synthesis sequences, but also some of the techniques that we use in practical terms to try and purify our products so we get the highest quality product we possibly can. So hopefully this uh, introduction has been fairly useful just to get you thinking about some of the things we do in organic chemistry, and uh, hopefully it'll also be useful when you do some of your practicals yourself um, to get your practical endorsement. So thanks again for listening, and uh, see you soon. Thank you. Bye.